Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and I'm really excited about today's video. Today we're going to be covering the NEC changes for surge protection, and these are big changes. We're going to start in the 17 through the 2020 and on into the 23. Remember, make sure you work with your local electrical inspector and also follow all local ordinances. All electrical work should be done legally, morally, and ethically. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, so let's talk about code placement. I always like to let us know where it's physically at in the code because things are changing. Whole sections are being added, sections are being deleted. Let's go ahead and get to it. So let's start with 2017 as the base. So no, we don't have anything about mandatory surge protection in the 2017 NEC. Then in the 2020, they create a new section, 230.67, and it's the same code reference in the 2023. So let's go ahead and see what's happening over here in the 2017. And guys, truthfully, these are the glory days. So if you are on the 2017 code, this is where we're at. We're still celebrating. There's a lot of really good things that we are uh, not required to do yet and some, some good old codes uh, that they are still holding on to, some of them in services. So what happens is, is that, you know, 17 was such a great code, probably my great, you know, my favorite code so far. And then they get into 2020 and they make some changes. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. And then they fix a bunch of them in the 2023. So I'm really excited that my state is going to jump from the 17 into the 23. But right now, we're currently having a party. But let's snap back to reality. Now let's jump into the changes in the 2020. There was a brand new section created called 230.67. In part A, it talks about all services. In part B, it's going to talk about the locations. In part C, which we're going to break each one of these down, that tells you the type of device. And in part D, it talks about even on replacements. So we're going to break these down one at a time. Let's start over here in 230.67A. And it requires them to be on all services that supply dwelling units. So every single service that supplies a dwelling unit is required to have surge protection. So this currently excludes commercial applications, which could get very complicated and get very expensive. So this one's pretty cut and dry. Now let's take a look at Part B. So Part B is when things start to uh, heat up just a little bit. It says here that it shall be an integral part of the equipment for the service or located adjacent to. And the code language says immediately adjacent to. And that sounds pretty cut and dry on the face level. Hey, it's got to be an integral part of the service equipment or immediately adjacent to it. But don't forget what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the national exception code. But we'll dive into the exception in a minute. Right now, let's dive into the actual code. So the code says it shall be an integral part of the equipment for the service, of the service equipment, which means, I guess it could be up here on top. It also could be down low here as one of these. is If it's inside of this piece of equipment, this being the service equipment, it technically is considered integral, built into, whether you've added it on later or they manufactured it with it built in. Now let's talk about the second part of this. It says, or located adjacent to, and the code language says immediately adjacent to. Let me give a good example of that. This search protector here is immediately adjacent to that panel that it's connected to. Another really good example is if you had an outdoor meter only, and then you did a whole house outdoor panel, that would still be inside the service equipment, that would be okay. Or if you wanted to pop out of the side of it and do a small box with the surge protection, you could also count that. So this one leaves it a little bit up to the interpretation of the authority having jurisdiction on what immediately adjacent to means. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the elephant in the room, which is always the exception. And the exception in this case, I'm really happy with. So... 230.67b says, hey, you must put it at the service equipment as an integral part or immediately adjacent to. But the exception says, nah, I'm just kidding. You really don't have to. And that is when some of us, let's read it first. It says, you don't have to if you install surge protection 
at every distribution panel equipment downstream. And I'm going to explain what that means here in just a minute. But if you're like me, when the code says do it here and then don't do it there, this is when your head starts to explode. So literally they said in part 67B that you must do it here. And then they're like, nah, we're just kidding. You really don't have to if you follow this, this, and that. And what this exception saying is, is that you're not required to do it at this location or immediately adjacent there to if, as long as you install it at every distribution panel downstream. So this would include the main quote sub panel that's feeding the house and every sub panel after that. So you don't have to do it outside if you don't want to, but you're going to be required at every other sub panel in the system to install search protection there. Now let's go ahead and let's look at part C. Part C is talking about the type of device. And I've dropped a recent video on the different types of devices and kind of just some surge protection, you know, how to's. If you look at my videos on YouTube and scroll down, I've got a really good recent video all about surge protection. But the part C here says it shall be type one or type two. Let's dive a little deeper. Woo, so here we go. So type one is going to be on the line side of a service. So this would be maybe installed by your utility company or in some manner that's approved on the line side of the service. So it's after the secondary. So you have your primary coming to your home. Then we transform it down with the secondary. Type one is some at some point in the system in between that secondary drop or service lateral and the load side connection here that we're going to talk about here in just a moment. That would be type one. Now let's talk about type two. Type two is anywhere on the load side of the uh, the main, you know, the main breaker on the load side of the service connection. So it could be anywhere down here. It also could be in this panel right here or any other sub panel. That would technically be a type two surge protector. Type one, line side. Type two, loans, load side. Let's get to it. Now let's take a look at part D. So in part D, Shoo, this is where a lot of people got excited because it's now requiring it not only on new construction and quote all services, but it's also requiring it when services are being replaced. And this is where some people feel like, hey, the NEC is kind of crossing the line here. It's not intended to be a design manual. Is this now being a design manual because they're telling us to do it in a retrofit application? And in my opinion, I could see that argument, but I agree with the change so much that I'm just, it doesn't bother me. And let me explain why I agree with this change at all, the whole change, all of 230.67. The reason is, is there are so many sensitive electronics in our home that I think that the NEC should require surge protection on a home. Now, how they're doing it, you, you can drop it down in the comments below. Forcing us to do it, you can let us know what you think down in the comments below. But let me explain the, the thought process here. Smoke detectors, arc fault breakers, ground fault breakers, your dishwasher, your circuit board inside of your air conditioning system, all of these things can be ruined by one surge. And you don't want to be, let me give you the, the kind of wildest scenario. Let's say you're there's a storm and lightning strikes your house and simultaneously fries all of your smoke detectors while hitting your service riser and riding out through your grounding electrode and catching the house on fire. If you don't think it can happen, I've got some excellent stories. You can give me a shout anytime. I had a buddy that lightning struck. He's an electrician, went out to a customer's house. Lightning had struck the service, rode out through the grounding electrode. The customers call him out, and he, he's out there right at, as the storm's still going on, you know, right as it happened. And he looks around. Nothing's going on. They notice uh, one of the lights isn't working. He pulls the light down, and he notices. He said, everything looks good here, but your light's on in the attic. They're like, we don't have a light in the attic. And lightning had struck the grounding electrode conductor and caught the attic on fire. And they got the fire department out there and got it put out. Let's imagine for just a second that lightning struck and ruined all your smoke detectors and caught your attic on fire. That's why we have to have surge protections on residences. Because sure, you know, it, you, you may not be able to stop it uh, from, you know, 
going down your grounding electrode conductor and causing damage in that manner, but at least you would have smoke detector protection still. Now, that's always, it's always the most farthest out story, right, that we talk about, but these things happen, and I'm all about surge protection at home. What if it fried every single arc fart, arc fart, I like that, arc fault breaker inside of your panel? Sometimes we feel that way about them, don't we? But what if it fried every single arc fault breaker? Could you imagine a $1,500 fix just to get your lights back on in your home? So I'm really cool with this one. But this is where they may take it a little bit far, requiring it on replacements. Let's see if they take it out in the 2023. But right now we're in the 2020. Let's dive a little bit deeper. So it says here in 230.67D that you're required to do it when you're replacing the service. So let's talk about when you would be required to do it. If you are replacing the meter, you would be required to add surge protection to this residence. If you are replacing the meter disconnect combo or adding a meter disconnect combo, you would be required to do it. What about changing the panel only, though? What if you're only changing the panel? Does that qualify as the service? Well, it might. If this is the first point of disconnect, this is also your service equipment. So if you say say you left the meter only or let's say you uh, you know left the meter only and you went inside and changed the panel or if you had an outdoor panel and you change the panel only, and this is your first point of disconnect, then yes, you would have to add surge protection to this residence as well, because technically you're changing the service equipment. So what 230.67D says is that if you change the service equipment, now you're required to, you're required to install the surge protection. And this would be an excellent time to check out the sponsor of today's video. All right, y'all, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. It's ICM Controls. And specifically today, I want to look at the ICM 518, which is going to be our 240 volt whole home surge protective device. What I love about this device is it's rated for type one and type two whole home surge protection. It has an insanely high maximum surge current that it's able to take if it's taking the mother load. It's UL listed. It's also NEMA type four X watertight enclosure. You can use this thing indoors or outdoors. It's absolutely bad to the bone. Highly recommend ICM controls. I'll put a link down in the description below. Let's get to it. With that being said, what the code's saying here is that, hey, if you touch or change any of this service equipment, including your meter, meter disconnect combo, or if your panel is the first point of disconnect, you're now going to be required to install whole home search protection. Now let's take a look at the changes in the 2023. Did they take some stuff out? Did they put some new stuff in? Usually it's incremental, right? They'll, they'll, they'll blow our minds a little bit, and then they'll add a little more and a little more. Let's take a look at it now. All right, so we are in 230.67a, so the code section hasn't changed. And what has changed here is they've added some more locations to be required. This kind of looks like an arc fault situation where they bring it in a little bit, bring it in a little bit more. And I've got no problem with these changes. I have paraphrased these four points, so I always encourage you to look directly at the code book for the exact code language. The first edition, they kept dwelling units, which is part one. They've added on boarding house accommodations, which is aka dormitory units. Hotel and motel guest room accommodations, starting to sound like some arc fault language here. And then exclusive pa patient sleeping quarters in nursing home and assisted living facilities. So you don't want lightning to strike and knock out someone's oxygen machine. Here's the catch, though. What this code, what all of these codes say is that you're required to do it according to 230.67. So these can't be type 3 surge protectors meaning they can't be surge protector receptacles and they can't be surge protector strips. Something that I think they need to clear up in the 2026. Now let's take a look at the next change in the 2023. It's a very simple change, but it's obviously necessary. This is 230.67 and new section E, and it's talking about minimum rating requirements. So now they've made a minimum rating people must have been putting in or manufacturing very cheap surge protectors to try to either circumvent or just kind of nullify this code just a little bit, maybe to just despite it. Do you see what I'm saying? So now they have to have a nominal discharge rating of no less than 10 kilo 
volt or not kilovolt, kilo amperes. So this is talking about it has to have a minimum rating of 10 ka kilo amperes kilo amperes it is very early in the morning so let's go ahead and go get it now guys that's it so this is from the 17 to the 20 to the 2023 i hope that you enjoyed this video and i just want to remind you that if there's anything i can do to help you in life or business you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others let's get to it